Hello, everybody. Welcome to another edition of the MakeCoder Cute Advanced Stream. Thomas is back edition. Hey, I am hey, Richard hey. at Richard on the MakeCode Forum. I am Thomas at Sparks on the MakeCode Forum. And uh, Joey is out today. I saw the bot connected in chat, but I guess it unconnected because it doesn't seem to be working. So that's unfortunate. But um, uh, yeah, Joey's out today. He's sick, unfortunately. We all wish him well. Um, Today, though, we are working on our Bug President game. Um, so where we left off on Bug President last time. Um, sorry, Thomas I haven't is, seen this giant bug yet, so I'm just I'm just <laughs> based by what I'm seeing yeah, right now. He, he just hangs out. All right, so we're still working on enemy AI. Um, so we have got, actually, we've got the AI part pretty much done. So um, got this enemy walking around. Oh, he's got me, got my scent. Oh, he set me on fire. Ah, I need to call back these guys. Yo, ah. So when he sets you on fire, your bugs start running around um, on fire. They just kind of panic. Um, and you can call them back by um, calling. The other thing that happens is you get set on fire, and you can't stop moving forward for a little bit, and you start moving faster. So see, okay. you're like, yeah. Um, and um, so the, the next thing we have to do here, though, is um, eventually your, your bugs need to die if they've been on fire for a long time. I know it's sad, but them's the breaks. That's the, you know, bug president does the hard jobs. Yeah. Um, That's the reality of being on fire. It yeah. happens. All right, so we're going to do that first. Um, the other thing we need to do is fighting back against these guys. So we need to make it so our bugs can attack them. Um, and then we will finally be done with enemies. Oh my gosh. Um, I don't know how many streams we have left, we have done on enemies alone. Um, I don't know, Richard, I don't know what you're talking about. I feel like I just saw like maybe one. Yeah. yeah it's, uh, I, I don't remember the last time we streamed and we're not working on enemies. Um, all right, so uh, let's do this. Let's see, uh, Lucas says, at the end of the stream, can you all try the new red line update? Yep, stick it in chat. We'll try it out. All right, so we need to, um, uh, like I said, make our little fire bugs die when they get set on fire. Um, and uh, the way we're gonna do that is, I think we have a set bug on fire function right here. Go. And um, so all we're doing is we change their kind. We unassign them from everything. Um, we also um, animate them with this little flashing animation. And um, we're giving them a random velocity, and then they're just kind of running around randomly. So um, to, uh, the other thing we're going to do here, though, is we need to give a timer, basically, which is going to be their remaining life. So we're not going to use lifespan for this, because I actually don't remember how to cancel lifespan. I think if you set it to a negative number, it'll probably stop working. But in the worst case, I might have to set it to undefined. And there's not an easy way to do that in blocks. So we're not gonna, we're not gonna use lifespan for this. We're just gonna do it ourselves. Um, and to do that, we're gonna use sprite data. So let's go into sprite data and do set to number, um, grab our bug, and uh, time set on fire. And we're going to set this to the current time like that. Um, Lucas says, when you all finish this game, we should have a mini game jam where you make levels for this game. That's not a bad idea. We could do that. It's been a while since we've done a level design jam. We are definitely going to be doing level design on stream. So, But it would be nice to have other folks make levels too. All right, all right, all right. OK. So. Um, Let's go to where we're doing the uh, AI for these guys who are randomly running around, which I don't actually, I think it might just be inside here. Um, yeah, 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 here we go. So for element value of array of sprites kind on firebug, we're doing a 50% chance changing the velocity angle. And that's what our little random running around logic is. So we're just going to do um, our dying logic in here, too. So we're going to um, just do a comparison 
and uh, subtract. And we're going to do time since start minus whatever our set on fire time is. And if that is greater than whatever we want our lifespan to be, then the bug will die. On fire time. Wait, wait, wait a second. Time, I have on fire time, which I'm already using for something else, and I have time set on fire. <laughs> Is on fire time when the bug president is put on fire? I'm guessing that is what that is. Yeah. Um, I should probably just reuse that. I mean, it's fine because oh, they're yeah, different times. Yeah. But eh, whatever, whatever, whatever. We'll just keep it separate. It's, it's, yeah. It's a problem for future us. Okay. So time since start minus this. This gives us the amount of elapsed time. If this is greater than whatever we want our time, we're going to be generous and give you five seconds. If that happens, then we're going to destroy our poor bug. And um, when we do this, we also have to change. Um, the number of bugs there are. Round following bugs round total bugs by negative one because now there's just one less bug in the world and whenever we change that number we also have to call our update hud function i forgot to do this last time there is it do 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 do, do update hud there it is okay and the last thing we want to do is we want to make the soul come out of the body. I said we were going to do this, and I wasn't lying. So we're going to make a little um, ghost sprite. And let's see how small we can make this. So I feel it's important it has eyes, which is going to make it much bigger than our like actual bug is. Bugs, little bugs with big souls. Yep. There you go. Nice. We'll see how, see how ridiculous this looks. Um, so this is one, two, three, four, five by one, two, three, four, five, six. All right, and let me go see what my cat's destroying. You have some paper auto. That's fine. You do that. Otto's tearing up some, pa some paper, everybody. Also, hi, Kiwi Finks. Yeah, unfortunately, there's no bot today because Joey is sick. One day, in a magical world, we will put the bot up in Azure, and it'll just always run. <laughs> One day. But both Joey and I are too lazy to do that, so maybe someone else could. Get those Azure credits. Yep. So we're going to set there this to be our temp sprite um, like this. We need to make sure it's at the same position as the bug that has died. Um, so let's go ahead and set its position right here. Um, we're going to grab the bug X. Bug Y. And we're probably going to just subtract a couple pixels from our Y so that we're a little bit above it. Um, and then we're going to animate this guy. Let's see, animation. I think there is an animation that might already work for this. I never use the built-in animations, but maybe we will for once. Uh, let's see, we have... Shake, no. Bounce, no. Parachute, no. Ease, no. Wave, no. Bobbing in, no. Bobbing, no. Okay, so there is, no, we have to make her. Ugh, ugh. What does wave do? Um, I, I assume that wave is just going to do like sine wave. Oh, up and down. No. But what we want is we want it to go like. Yeah. And then disappear. 
Yeah. Um, but we can we can we can do it. So we're gonna go into um, text and again, su secret super arcade power. Impress your friends. Um, you can put a string in here and do custom animations that way. Um, and I guess to test this out, um, I'm going to put this inside of on menu button pressed. We're going to create one of these guys. Change this to be bug president X. Bug president Y. And I made it. So here I'll just do V negative 10. And now when I press menu, we should get these guys appearing. There you go. OK, so we can test our code. Um, so we just want them to go side and side a little bit as they float up. And we're going to use a quadratic Bezier curve for that. Um, I'm about to write some nonsense. So um, I'm going to be using lowercase q, which means relative to my current position. Now, um, quadratic Bezier curve takes in two point arguments, so two x, y values. The first is a control point, which I'm not going to try to explain. Basically, it determines how the curve curves. So whichever direction we put this from like where our start point is and where our end point is, it's going to be curving like if you imagine drawing a triangle to that point and our end destination point, the curve will kind of be fitting inside that triangle. Just look up a diagram. Honestly, it's it'll it'll be much easier than me trying to explain it. Um, but um, so I want them to go to the left and then I want them to go to the right and I want them to be moving upwards. So for the X, we're going to start by going to the left. We're going to do negative five. And then um, we want to go up. So we're going to do um, 10. No, 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 we'll do five. So negative five, five. Then um, this next point is going to be um, where we actually end up. So we don't want to move in the X direction. We want to go back to the center. Um, but we do want to move in the Y direction. Oh, this should be negative. Uh, so we're going to make this negative 10. Um, and now we want to do this again but in the opposite direction. So now we're going to do Q and then positive 5, negative 5, 0, negative 10. And change this to one second. And also give this guy a lifespan because it's annoying me that they just stay around forever. All right. Pretty good. Yeah, not bad. Do you want them to make? Do you want them to go like one more, or is that? I feel like I don't know. Maybe at the end it should just kind of go up, or slightly not not quite so side to side. But one more stage where it goes just more directly. Yeah. Ahead. So let's let's do two more um, quadratic curves, but we're just going to reduce these numbers. So we'll change this to negative two, negative two, then make this negative. Four, and then we'll do two, negative two, four, and we're going to change this to two seconds. Change our lifespan to two seconds. So they should do one big left, right, and then a smaller left, right. Get away from the wall. Eh. Eh, let's get rid of one of these. Um, let's just do one more. So we'll get rid of that. Yeah, and then um, maybe increase this by just a little bit. So we'll change this to negative 2.5 and negative 5, just a little bit. Yeah, I think that'll work. Thanks, so too. Still ghost. All right. So we're going to take these two blocks and stick them up here. Get rid of that. And we can get rid of this menu. We don't need that anymore. Um, and we're going to set the Z on these guys. 
Uh, wait, where's a set property block? I don't have one right now. Uh, to be above, I, I just want him to be above bug president. And I do not remember what bug president Z is. So I think we're just going to do bug president Z plus one. All right, let's try this out. So let's go and sacrifice some of our bugs. Oh, we forgot one thing, we forgot one thing, we forgot one thing. Um, we got to, in here, also turn them into ghosts. Appropriate. Oh, so we saw them getting stuck on the tile map. In order to prevent that from happening, we just need to turn them into ghosts and then they'll just, you know, phase right on through it like ghosts should. You chose temp number. Uh, yeah, I think you want temp sprite. Yep, 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 yep. There we go. All right, all right. Try it again. Try it again. These guys go. And. Hmm. Mm. Well, they died. Did you destroy the sprite before the end of placing the block on top of the sprite, the ghost? I did, that but that sh that's no, it doesn't matter. That's fine. Ah, uh, here we go. That'll do it. I was setting the X instead of the Z. So they were getting, they were appearing, but it's just like way over there. All right, come on, let's try this again. Look at me. Such a such a dangerous enemy facing. Yeah, me. this this guy's big biggest uh, problem is corners. Whoa. Ooh. Okay, yeah, I think this is good. Actually, I think I think that's pretty good. Yeah, say so. Could maybe with like a little randomness in their lifetime, but I think it's fine. Yeah. Um, here we go. And maybe let's try green. I don't know if that'll make it clear that it's the bugs dying. Let's see what it looks like. If it looks dumb. We'll change it back. Oh yeah. Let's let's do that other thing before we test this. Um, so we're gonna give some randomness to their lifetime. The way we're going to do that is um, so the tempting way to do it would be to just over inside of this on game update, say, like. If the time minus the other time is greater than and then put a random range right here, that's bad, though, because that random range is going to change every single game update that we do. So it's going to end up in general being on the lower end because each time you know there's a chance it's going to be lower and you know it might survive a few frames but that's not really going to work um so what we're going to do instead is when we set our bug on fire we're going to subtract Or, or, you know, let's add. We'll be friendly. Wouldn't subtracting be the... No. Because it's like setting... Subtracting oh, yeah, right, units right. farther in the past. So yeah. they'll die sooner. Um, so we're going to add a random between 0 and uh, 300 milliseconds. Sounds good. ahead and pick some guys up walk on over hey you stop getting stuck in corners there you go it's like they lived a lot longer than they used to just well, no it's it's five seconds which is a pretty long time okay Okay, let's let's increase the range a little bit, but that that feels pretty good. Um, we'll we'll do yeah. zero to five hundred. 
Um, and I like the green. Do you like the green? Yep. That looks good. Cool. Let's see. Uh, Q Phoenix says um, that they are still working on their custom 3D engine. Um, they don't know if they'll ever release it or if it'll work. Um, but yeah, and um, if you ever have a demo of that, Key Phoenix, you know, we'll try it out on stream. Let us let us know. Okay. Um, also, if you haven't seen it, people watching this, um, you should go check out Aki Aki's isometric renderer demo in the forum, which is real cool. It's wild. Yeah, I was looking at that the other day. Yeah, it's been on my to-do list forever to do an isometric rendering thing, but not like his. I was going to do a fake one. He's doing like a real one. So, um, yeah, very impressive. Yep. All right, cool. OK, um, so we have bugs that can die, sad. Um, now we need to be able to defeat these guys. So let's talk about how that's going to work. Um, we're going to throw bugs over at these guys, and then they're going to start attacking. So what we probably want to do is we are going to um, have these bugs just kind of hop around, and we want them to hop around towards the back of this guy. Because we, when he does his fire attack, we don't want them all to get set on fire if they're attacking. You know, there might be a chance they get set on fire, but we don't want them to guarantee get set on fire because the fire just happens to spawn where they are. So we want them to kind of cluster around the back of this guy, kind of be jumping up and down. And um, we want to give this guy some health that he will then use to, um, that will then, you know, just kind of get chipped down, just like we do with walls. So um, walls are probably actually a pretty good example for this. Let's go ahead and uh, do a DR real quick. Collapse box, format code. We're going to go to our wall code and take a look at that. So let's grab this on time uploaded because we're going to have to look at this where we create our walls. Oh no, we handle the actual wall creation inside of the on sprite of kind wall created. Do, do, do. Or maybe we don't. Oh, yeah, I'm completely distracted looking for a forum post, so I have no idea what you're trying to do. Sorry. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm looking for where we set the health of the walls. Oh, right here. Yeah, it's right here. OK, so we set this durability to this number wall durability. Um, so we're going to do something similar here. So we're going to set a health on our enemy, on our firebug. So let's go to sprite data. We're going to call it health, though, because I'm never going to remember we called it durability. Oh, this is a string. I feel like we need to put like icons or something on these blocks. <laughs> I always grab the wrong one. I wish there was a way for me to just like at a glance know what they are without having to actually read them. Be nice. Come on now. Um, we're gonna set this to number. I guess we should put this in a variable. And we will set this inside of on start. All right, what did we set for the wall durability? 100. Uh, so we will set this to also be 100. We'll tweak it. That's why we're putting it in a variable. So. All right. Now what are we going to do? We want to um, 
take our bugs and when they uh, when a thrown bug overlaps with an enemy, we want to assign them to that task. So just like we've done with our other ones, um, let's see, on sprite of kind thrown bug overlaps with other sprite of kind food. Perfect. We're going to duplicate this. Just imagine if you set the enemy of food, the bugs just just chuck it down their hole. Oh my gosh, our, our, our bugs become carnivores. <laughs> um, uh, so we're going to change this to fire bug. We're going to call on throw end. Um, and we're not going to call assign to carry task, that's for sure. Um, we're going to instead call another function. Man, we have so many functions. It's weird. I wasn't expecting this to be the biggest game we've ever made, but it's getting pretty close code wise, I think. Wow. Let's have a lot going on. Yep. All right. So we're going to call this function. There we go. And um, what do we want to do in here? Well, first off, we're going to, just like with all of our other ones, we're going to set the task. So we store whatever they're currently working on in this task sprite data. It's going to take our bug, going to do task, going to store our enemy so that we can kind of keep a link there. And what are you doing? Breakfast. Oh, he's chewing some grass. I bought some cat grass for my cats. I didn't. I did not expect them to immediately go for it. Wow. Well, they did. I'm assuming. Oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Cats are obligate carnivores, right? Like they only eat right. meat. But for some reason, they love grass because I guess it settles their stomach or something. Um. So I got it for breakfast so that he would have something to chew on that's not plastic because he's obsessed with chewing on plastic. Um. And both he and Otto just immediately took to it. They really like it. Good idea. Belle likes to chew plastic as well. Maybe I should try getting her cat grass. Try cat grass. Really yeah. cheap. I just got it from Mud Bay and it costs like five bucks, I think, for like a little pot filled with growing grass. You know, it's alive. <laughs> cool. My cats are being very cute. They're grooming each other right now. Oh, my cats almost never do that. <laughs> Well, they know they sorry, they do that at least once a day and Otto will start grooming breakfast and then it will at some point transition into Otto biting breakfast. Ah, it's, it's All right. Cool, we need to um, now if these guys are attacking. Let's see, have we been creating sprite kinds for all the tasks or like what have we been doing? Oh, yeah, busy bug. And we need to go ahead and do AI for these guys. So I think the AI for these guys is done inside of the same on game update where we're doing like everything. I think it's this one. Let's see. Array of kind throne bug, array of kind food. Grapes, wall, on fire bug. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So we've been we've been doing it kind of in the opposite direction, which makes sense and probably what we should also do here. Yeah. All the bugs are assigned to the enemy. Yeah. Um, so let's loop over our enemies and instead of looping over our um uh busy bugs. Um so let me duplicate this for loop. Not the whole thing. Gosh. Throw that away. Change this to firebug. And um, 
Okay, now we're going to do another for loop in here. And we're going to um, do call our function get bugs assigned to task and put in our value for there. Yeah, I, I I don't think I was thinking about this when I when we structured this code, but this was actually a smart way to do it because it made doing this really easy. Um, all right, so we're going to loop over all of our bugs that are assigned to our task, which is um, our fire bug. And what we want to do is we want to have them um, attack our thing. So we have this update wall function. Let's go to definition for that because we're going to be doing something kind of similar. Really, we're just going to be doing the health part of this, but that's all I want to copy. This code block's really going on a journey. Yep. Okay, we're. This is literally all I want from there, isn't it? Uh, you made the less than zero check, but yeah. Yeah, I guess I'll copy that. There we go. Get rid of all this. Get rid of all this. There we go. OK. So we are going to change our value for, which is our um, uh, firebug. Firebug, yes. I'll get bugs assigned to task. Oh, this is smarter. No, no, no. We're not going to do it this way. We're just going to do bug attack damage times one. We're just going to do it individually for each bug. So in the other one, we are um, just subtracting by the length of the get bugs assigned to task array, which is good, um, except we need to, in this case, we're also going to have behavior for each of the bugs. We need them to run behind the bug that they're attacking. So to do that, um, it, it, we're going to have to loop over all of them anyway. So we'll just do it this way. So if the dur durability, change this to health. So if our health is less than or equal to zero, we are going to destroy our firebug. And we will also be doing some sort of animation. But for now, we're just going to destroy them. And we're going to call break, because we don't need to loop over the rest of the bugs. OK, cool. I'll assign the bugs, or is that happening automatically? Uh, you're right. We do need to unassign all of our bugs. Um, so This should be fine. I'm reusing this value here, but I'm pretty sure this should be fine. All right. Anyway, okay. Cool. We unassigned our bugs. Um, so uh, that's nice. But we need to do the behavior of these guys actually like um, attacking our bug. So we can test this out right now. Um, I'm going to grab all of these bugs. There we go. Going to go to our firebug and there you go some of them hit them we're not going to see them actually do anything oh there you died beautiful all right so that worked um Uh, so we need to um, uh, make it so that they are constantly walking to behind him, like I said. Um, and the way we're going to do that is, um, what is the way we're going to do that? Um, I guess we'll just use the move to inside of Sprite Utils. Yeah, we can get the bug, the enemy's like facing direction. Yeah. So we're going to take our bug. We're going to do a move to 
and we're going to do some unfortunate trigonometry. Um, and we're going to take the facing direction of our enemy. We're going to add pi to it, which is going to get the backwards direction. Um, we're going to take the sine and cosine of this. And then we're going to multiply it however far back we want them to be. So we will set this to be five. I don't know, probably fine. Um, and we are then going to add this to the X value of our sprite. I don't know why the simulator just went dark. Oh, it's just being super slow. Oh man, we haven't seen this bug in forever. No, it's just, just running slowly. Yeah, this hasn't happened in a really long time. Mm -hmm. Did I actually make my game slow or is it just, or is this that old bug? Yeah, it was that old bug. Huh, huh, okay, we'll need to keep an eye on that. Uh, so that's an old bug where um, uh, if, if you have the simulator running a lot and you keep refreshing it, there is a memory leak, which then causes it to um, do garbage collection so much that it slows the iframe way, 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 way down. Um, yeah. All right, all right. Nice. Um, we want to randomize this a little bit so they're not all running to the exact same spot. So we're going to do plus and then do um, pick random. To random. randomize the dis. This would be randomizing. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, it's just going to be randomizing the. There's a, there's a few ways we could do it. I think the most natural, though, is just going to be to actually randomize it, you know, by adding a random number. Yeah, I'll say this, or you randomize the 3.14. Right, yeah. yeah. The problem is then it might look a little weird. Um, it probably won't with the numbers we're dealing with. That'll probably look fine. Yeah. Um, OK, 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 great. Um, now we need to do this for Y, so we change this to Y. We change this to sine, and that's it. Um, now we can go ahead and pull this out. Stick this in here. Oh, wait, wait, wait. All right, pull this back out. Uh, this is using the move to um, over time. There's a move to with speed, and that's what we actually want. Are right, you move to with speed? There you go. Now we will go ahead and stick in our X and Y. Um, OK, cool. Well, it should be very easy to test this out. I'm just going to grab these guys and go ahead and throw them at our enemy. And now instead of just sitting there, we should see them. There they go. Hey, we <laughs> don't even have to make them hop around. They're just kind of naturally hopping around, aren't they? Yeah, I guess we're managing to just stay right here. Or is it yeah. the random that's doing it? It's the random that's doing it. Um, and it's actually pretty perfect. That's yeah, cool. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Whoa, what was that? Did the whole screen just flash, or is that Teams? That was Teams, I think. Okay. Um. All right, cool. We got attacking. They might be too good at attacking right now, but that's that's fine. We can tweak the enemy health. Um, and uh, cool. Okay. Uh, so let's do a death animation for our enemy. Um, so how are we going to do this? Um, let's do a function. Oh, that works too. Separate. 
disintegrate. Oh, that won't work because of how they're drawn. Yeah, so a bunch of different sprites. So we're just going to call death animation on this guy. Get rid of this destroy. Inside of this death animation, we are going to set the speed to zero so they're not moving anymore. And we are going to um, change the kind so that this code doesn't run on them anymore. Where's this? I can never find set kind. Here it is. We will set this to decoration. Final insult. You're no longer an enemy, just a decoration. Yep. And oh, hmm. Uh, Those are good death sound effects. Oh yeah, we need. To, we'll add sound effects to this game, but we're not doing that today. Um. Okay. Our AI is still going to be running. Is the problem. Um. Um, OK, why? Why? Because Is it not based on the sprite kind? No, so this won't be running. But our enemy AI. Just to run if sprite is kind decoration. Return. Oh, I'll show you in just a second. Add enemy AI. Here we go. That That is what we're going to do. Yes, basically. Um. OK, so inside of our add enemy AI, um, we have this on enemy update, which you know doesn't care about the kind, obviously. Um, so we are going to do exactly what you just said. We're going to say um, the sprite kind does not equal decoration. Then we will do all of this junk. Yeah. Evil. All right, back to our death animation. OK, so they should stop moving now. We've changed their kind. We are now going to use the timers extension and do a separately do. And what I'm thinking is we just do a bunch of explosions like that works and they destroy they, they get destroyed. Okay. Um, so we're going to do a loop in here. We're going to do a repeat however many times. Um, we're going to create a sprite for this and we're going to do an animation on it. So let's do that. Going to make this eight by eight. That's probably a little too big. Let's do six by six. Um, and uh, we're going to draw a little explosion effect. So um, we're just going to do a. Wow, this is the almost the exact color of the background. Um, let's do this white instead. Oh, is this? No. That is your white. Yeah. Oh, they are the same. This is optical illusion. This looks very different than this to me. Um, OK, so we're going to do that, and then we're going to kind of just like. OK, 
go. Now erase that. Erase that. Erase that. And they're gone. Needs to be rounder. Does look pretty square when you start erasing things. Yeah. A little better. That'll, that'll be fine. OK. So uh, we're going to create one of these guys. And Sprite, give it kind decoration. Um, and this is one, two, three, four, five frames. So we're going to give it a lifespan of 500. All right. Now we are going to set its location. So we will do um, go into Sprite Utils, do place distance from thing, um, grab our sprite here. So we're going to be placing it from this sprite. I'm going to grab this temp sprite, put that right there. So the angle, we're just going to do random angle. So we're going to do um, pick random, and we have to convert from degrees to radians. Do, 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 do. do. Going to do um, one, two. Oh, sorry, 0 to 359. Forgot this is not the distance. This is the. No, and we're going to set the distance to be um, 0 to 12. Um, and then we're going to pause for less time than the lifespan is. So we will pause for 200 milliseconds. Um, and then at the end of this, we will destroy our sprite. Let's up this to five times, and um, let's do a 50% chance that it'll be a slightly different color for this explosion. So put in an if, do a 50% chance. Like that. This in here, and then in the if, going to do this. But we're going to change this color to this other color. So shift R, shift R, shift R, shift R, shift R. There you go. Um, and that is completely invisible. Look at that. You cannot see that at all. No, you never know. Yeah, I can barely see it if I look super closely, so they're not exactly the same. OK. Um, cool. Uh, last thing we have to do is make these guys ghosts. Here it is. Cool, all right, let's try it out. Nice. That looks pretty good. Yeah. Uh, one thing, that fire needs to go away. Oh.
If the enemy walks into a bug, does the bug start attacking the enemy? No, that's something that has been on my to-do list for a while. Hmm. Um, here, we're going to change this to be 100. We're going to change this lifespan to be um, 400. And we're going to change this interval to be 80. Just make it a little faster and up this to 6, not 65. <laughs> All right. Um, there we go. OK, so uh, let's try that one more time. So um, it's been on to do list to make it so that if a bug just happens to overlap with a task that's going on, um, they just automatically get assigned to it. The other thing we want to do is right now you have to be really precise with your throwing. Um, all right, cool. That's good. I like it. Right now you have to be really precise with your throwing. We need to make it so that if a throw ends and you're within a certain distance of a task that you can complete, you'll just run over to that task and yeah. you know start it steps okay and let me check i think we're actually done with enemies was there anything left i said else that we had to do um give them a little more health maybe and make the fire go away that's what you said right make fire go away okay let's make a we fire also go away. have two games to play before the end of script oh right so let's do that right now um, did I just throw away something? Okay, no, we're fine. We're fine. We're fine. All right, saving. Good to save your work periodically. Got it. All right, and let's start with Lucas's red line update. So, have you tried? Have you tried playing red line yet? Thomas? Uh, I played it a while back. I haven't played the newer updates. So. All right, Lucas, you're going to have to tell me what's new in this. Um, so I know you added quests, I believe. Um, quests and a new weapon that is apparently OP. Hello. Oh, I like how it zooms in. Looks like you forgot who you are. Well, that doesn't matter anymore. This is a checkpoint. Oh, you can use it to save your game or warp to other places. Anyways, there's some people who need your help. Some would say you owe them. OK, all right. That was um, ominous. Um, <laughs> I really like how you did that um, uh, cutscene, Lucas. I like how it zooms in and then zoomed over to the checkpoint. He was explaining what that is. Um, that's really cool. Oh, whoops, death, death. All right, I want to try this new weapon, but first I have to get rid of this guy. Ugh, there you go. So, wasn't it menu to switch? Do I need to unlock them now or something? Lucas, let me know if I'm doing something wrong. <laughs> okay, cool. I continue to be terrible at this game. No, you have to unlock them by doing quest. Ah, I see. Okay, cool. Hey, you got a quest for me? Hello, traveler. I have many wares. Wares. Um, but I have a quest for you first. I need you to kill 10 enemies, and I'll give you something. OK. All right, here's number one. There's no way I'm going to survive to kill 10. I have one heart left, Thomas. You can do it. I believe in you. All right, there's one. <laughs> All right, cool. I got a save point at least. There we go. 
Yeah. <laughs> There's two. There's three. There's four. Got lucky on that one. Uh -oh, uh -oh. oh boy. Oh boy. Do these guys count? Five. <laughs> six. Yeah. See when the pressure's on, you're making that happen. Oh, oh, oh. oh. Okay, 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 okay. We'll try that one more time. I want to beat the witch on stream. It's the the witch thwarted me last time. Ah. All bad guys count. Okay, so these little guys count too. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah. This is yeah. This is how I expected this to go. Oh my gosh. Remember how far I went on that last life in the last run? Yeah, it was impressive. Behind you, but uh, if you attack him and change direction, but you kind of have to. Oh, yes. Uh, All right, well cool. Done. Um, I wonder if I've defeated Tin now. It's a good question. We'll have to. Um, so let's head over to a checkpoint and we can teleport back over to that other one and see if we've done it yet. Is there a checkpoint back here? I don't know. Oh, is this where I came from? Yeah. Oh, okay, I did direction. Yeah, I believe there's mini bosses in this game, not just the um, <laughs> which Lucas says you have to warp back up. Yeah, that's what I thought. Um, jump over. Oh, that's death. That's okay. a shame. <laughs> All right. Well, uh, thank you, Lucas. Um, we're going to check out Key Phoenix's game now. I'm going to continue playing this, though, because I, I um, I feel like I'm finally getting the hang of the combat, you know, and um, it's really cool. Uh, I will try it out and maybe next time we will play again at the end of the stream and see if we can unlock that weapon. All right, let's try out Q Phoenix's 3D render demo. So Q Phoenix cautions that it currently doesn't have depth sorting, collision or rotation. So here you go, you can see we have some triangles. And it looks like we can move around a little bit, move up, down, but we can't rotate the camera. So, so impressive start. That's a, yeah, good progress. Not easy to do. Mm -hmm. I'm curious, are you working off a tutorial, Kiwi Phoenix, or some sort of graphics class? I never took graphics, did you, Thomas? I did. I um, what about? OpenGL, if I recall correctly, mm. which I've never used since. But yeah, yeah. Um. Oh, uh, Q Phoenix wants me to turn on the FPS. Do do do. Looking good. Yeah. Though there are only three triangles right now, but still. <laughs> um. Uh, yeah, I, I never took a graphics class, but um, Shannon was a graphics expert. Um, I think she like majored. Yeah. Oh, wow. OK, nice. You can access, but no, this is just my knowledge over the many times I've tried to make 3D. Cool. Um, I would suggest taking a graphics course or something along those lines, um, because there's a lot of non-intuitive stuff with 3D engines, I feel like. Yeah. And it can it can it can really help. Um, but it's still been on my to do list to make a vector and matrix math extension that does it in C++ mm -hmm. um, to make all of this easier. I'll do it at some point. All right. Anyway, thank you for tuning in, everybody. Um, I am Richard Everett on the Make Good Forum. Thomas uh, Sparks on the Make Good Forum. And we have a Halloween mini game jam going on right now. You can find out more details about it on the forum. We will see you later. Bye.